Division of Higher Art Education Institute for President Yang Qiwen to start. Okay, still good morning. I hope you do enjoy your tea break for a little while. Uh, we are very happy to, to open this first session of the Beijing, and we have three uh, honorable panelists, They're all from Europe and Mongolians and, and Professor Ama. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as we know that uh, uh, the nature of our university is very different from those of general universities. It responds to the development of our education throughout the entire countries. The role of an art university has become relatively diverse since the operation of an art university interweaves between the two systems of cultures and education. National art universities in some countries are overseen by culture rather than education ministries. In the year of 2011, similar suggestions were also been proposed in Taiwan, driven by the belief that it is unfair that the organization courses, teachers, and structures of arts of art universities follow the example of general universities. Since this blurs the unique professional features of arts university, regardless of whether authority falls under the ministries of education or ministries of cultures, art universities wield an important level of influence in developing personal training, cultural policies, and other such aspects in arts education. After the education minister of 29 European countries declared the Bologna declarations in 1999, higher education underwent major reform. In particular, arts universities become leaders among higher education institutions. Many cultural policies were developed on the basis of discovering and nurturing creative talent as well as creating a nature of citizenship. Thus, the virgins, the regions and governments of art university must take into consideration the development of a country's overall arts education, the demand for talents in the arts industry and even methods of guiding the direction of cultures policies. In the face of global economic turmoil, many countries have been gradually reducing the amount of funding for, the, for their university. Since art universities serve as platforms for cultivating professionals, they must implement alternative solutions such as guide teachers to provide students with more channels for diversified learnings, use professional internships to help students achieve the possibility of joint learning and application and open other channels for education through cross industry collaboration. Furthermore, art universities serve as base for creative inspiration and experimentation. They are able to provide enterprises with more possibilities for innovative development, as well as serve as bridges between arts and corporations. They can also assist in the drafting of deliberations and implementation of cultural policies as a way to give back to the industries and promote a positive energy for arts and cultures. However, to meet the need states above, we must think about how to coordinate with the management of schools and enable the government, enterprises, management, and teachers, students to reach a consensus. Together, our panelists, they can map up a common missions and vision toward achieve a breakthrough in the state status quo. Thus, by discussing the visions of art universities, different countries 
and art institutions can share their experience and exchange their view on the topic. This will help reveal the feasibilities in planning for the future of higher arts education institutions in Taiwan, thereby strengthening the overall development of the democracy of arts education. So I'd like to move, I, well maybe I should introduce the three panelists. The, the first one on my left hand side is uh, Professor Carla Belfors. She is the European League of Institute, founder of the U European League of Institute of the Arts, and also a professor, and she flew uh, a long way from Europe to here to, to attend to, to Ashisa to, to, to have this great symposium. Let's, let's have a welcome then to, to Carlos. So, yes. The second one is President Sonitogos and the National Mongolian State University of the Arts and Cultures. She is also the, the vice chair of the Alias members. And Maharudin, Professor Maharudin Ahmad, he is the National Academy of the Arts, Culture and, and Heritage. From Maybe we should move to the first stop to Kara. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a big pleasure to be here, and I'm glad to, to thank President Young and his wonderful team to organize this wonderful conference, well organized. Very interesting to see and meet all of you. Uh, I look forward to the day to come. What I would like to do now is, in fact, two things. I would like to, for, for Alia, I would like to give a kind of example, ins inspiration for, for Alia to, well, to share how we work and hopefully to see how we can make some joint work together in the future. And uh, in, in the end, I would like to highlight some challenges for higher arts education that Alia is seeing uh, and addressing and something that we might share and discuss later. Elia, organization. It was founded in 1990. It was a dramatic time in Europe. If the Iron Curtain just fell. Uh, there were lots of differences. We were um, confronting it in Europe that did not speak to each other, East and West, for 15 years. So there was a lot to overcome. Um, ELIA is a membership organization. The members are institutions. At this moment, we have around 300 institutions that are members of 50 different countries. And members are small institutions, like with 250 students, to really big institutions with 22,000 students. So there is a big variety in our membership. There is also, of course, a big variety in the cultures that we are representing and languages, for instance. A lot uh, of differences to address, to celebrate, and also problems to overcome. Our organization has hopefully uh, contributed to that. How the organization is, next one please, how the organization is structured the organization is owned by the members. So the members decide. The members decide who they elect a board. They decide about the future activities. They endorse the activities of the past and the finances of the past. So the ADM members are the ones in charge. They elect a representative board. It's very, as I said before, a diverse organization. So it's very important that all the regions of Europe are represented in the ELIA board. And we have decided two years ago that we also would like to have representation of outside of Europe. So there are two uh, elected members from non-European art institutions. The representative board uh, is endorsing a president and an executive group. And this executive group is in a way the management group that is managing and monitoring all the activities of the area. And then we have an office, a small office, based in Amsterdam, that is executing all the work. 
Next one, please. What we are doing, I would like to uh, briefly uh, explain that to you. Advocacy is a very important thing for ADA to address. We have written a manifesto. We are written policy papers. We would like to let our voice be heard to policy makers. Um, some of you were addressing it before. It's important that the role of the arts, the role of artists and the role of art institutions is expressed uh, to policy makers and is in a way better uh, implemented and embedded. Skills and competences. That is how we are preparing our students for the real world. So are we preparing them well? Uh, do we have to change what is happening in the, in the world that they will have to make a living? That is an important thing to address. Creative partnerships and knowledge alliances. It's about the art schools not being in their ivory tower and working very much and very intense with each other, but also to reach out to other partners, to speak to businesses, cultural institutions, the sciences, so to make connections to other disciplines in society. Quality, uh, artistic research, and a new generation of artist researchers. Artistic research is, in a way, something that is of a very recent development in the art schools. So we are looking at that. I will come back to it a little bit later. Quality assurance and peer reviews, it was mentioned uh, before. The quality assurance, we come back to it later, and my colleague Paula Crabtree will talk about it in detail. The changing role of the artists and of art society, of art schools in our societies, is something that we need to address constantly. Because the world is changing very rapidly. We have to address the environment, the things that are happening around us, the wars that are going on, as we mentioned before. It is important. Uh, the gap between the art schools and the world of work that is how do we prepare our students? How can they make a living of the education that we are giving them? Where are they, are they going to work? That are things that we are addressing. We are sharing good practice and we learn from each other and we hope to innovate and we intend to innovate constantly. One of the projects that we, are, uh, uh, we have been doing, we work in a little bit same way as Ayas, as Philippe was talking about. We always work with partners. Um, and we uh, work with funding sometimes from the European Commission. So we ask for, uh, we make applications for big projects. As I just said, um, uh, artistic research is a hot item at this moment. So it was something that uh, Elia thought we should address. So we, uh, we received funding for a three-year project that was called SHARE. And what is uh, very sad is that I, uh, we have sent a box with books, the, the, the big handbook of SHARE to here, but it has not arrived. So what I can do is if you like to receive the book, I can send it to you from Amsterdam. But I had hoped to be able to give it to you here but it's somewhere in between Amsterdam and Taipei. Um, but this has been a, a three-year project with 40 partners, I think, in 18 different countries. And we were addressing graduate schools, we were addressing the PhD, the third circle, how the schools are preparing that, because that's very different in the different countries. And we looked at uh, artist researchers and supervision. We have organized several conferences in the frame of this, uh, this project. Also, AEI is organizing biannual events. Next, please. Like Alia is also organizing every two years a big conference. So is AEI doing that from the start. So every two years, we have been traveling around through Europe, as you can see, all different places. 
We are preparing at this moment a conference, a big conference in Glasgow. It's in November. If you're interested to come, please let me know and we can, I can give you more information and also a nice uh, settlement on the fee. Uh, in this conference, everybody gathers. So around five, 500 participants are, uh, the delegates are participating here in this conference. We have many workshops going on, many uh, 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 round table discussions. We have mobile workshops that go into the city. We also have our uh, members meeting, so elections will be going on. And if you go to the next page, you will see the theme for the conference in Glasgow. And that is very much about what I just spoke about, about the role of the art school in the city. So, if you're interested, please come to me in the break and I can uh, tell you a little bit more about it because I don't want to take too much time. The next slide is about a service that Elia has developed and that Paula Crabtree will talk about in more detail, and that is about quality assurance and assessment, a very important uh, uh, thing in Europe, and as I understand, it becomes also more and more important for many of you. The next one, what is important for us? Partners. As you see, this was the founding conference. Some of you were there. Maybe you find yourself in the picture. <laughs> so there will be a next picture uh, too. Um, this was the founding conference of ALIA in Korea. For ALIA, it is really important to have partner, sister organizations like ALIA that we can uh, work with, that we can make projects together with, that we can uh, exchange information. Um, we have uh, also good contacts in America, with the networks in America, and we are at this moment also working on uh, organizing a kind of alia in Africa. So, reaching out to the world. The next uh, uh, it shows the leadership symposium. We were in Helsinki, in, in your institution. And the leadership symposium brings leaders, rectors, directors of art schools together. It's a, it's a pretty small event, like 100 participants. Uh, we keep it small because it's important that leaders can talk together. It's lonely at the top, and it's very good to speak together in an international setting about the problems and the uh, and the challenges of being a leader in higher arts education. At this moment, we are preparing the Leadership Symposium of 2015, and that will be taking place in Cape Town in South Africa. We also organize events for teachers, the Teachers Academy. At this moment, we are preparing the Teachers Academy that will take place in the Netherlands, in Tilburg. And if you are interested in being involved in that, please go to our website. We have a call for papers out. So if you are interested, you can submit a proposal for a paper, and then you can be invited to come. You can also participate as a delegate. It's a very interesting event for teachers. They can they share methods of teaching, they do workshops together, and um, they, because they come from uh, all countries, they also uh, organize, start to organize new projects together. The next project is about the students. We have uh, started, um, I think, in 1999. When was it? It was a long, long time ago, like six years ago. Ah, good. Um, we started a festival for students, and now we have our digital uh, possibilities. So we have a, an online festival that is selected by an international jury. The projects are nominated by the institutions and there is an online festival first. And from the online festival, a live festival is curated with about 40 <laughs> projects and the young artists are invited to come. This year we will do it in Glasgow. And next, on the next one you'll see 
the catalog that I also had sent to give to you here. Uh, regretfully, it's not here. But um, if you're interested, just go to our website because I, now I would like to go to the next one and that are the challenges for higher arts education in Europe as we see them, just to name a few. Making higher arts education more responsive to techno technological changes. The digital development goes uh, faster as we speak. How is that, what kind of influence does that have on our education uh, on our students, we have all kinds of new systems like MOOCs. How is the arts education um, sector responding to that? The second one, to develop artistic research and experimentation. I just talked about our project SHARE. It's something that we would like to continue talking about. The third one, cultural entrepreneurship, incubating uh, entrepreneurship. How are we preparing our students to take care of their, themselves when they uh, are from, coming from the schools? So, new ways of making a living as an artist. The fourth one, the creative partnerships, the private-public partnerships. I spoke about it before. It's more and more important for the art institutions, art education institutions, to cooperate with other institutions in their cities and in their countries especially in their cities. Our schools as part of cultural districts, creative clusters and urban renewal. Um, Philippe also was talking about the, the, the importance of the cities, the changing of the cities. And what I would like to talk a little bit more with you about is how you see the role of artists and uh, art education in that, because uh, I, I believe and we believe that uh, we really need to start discussing it with uh, policy makers and developers. Internationalization and globalization is a big issue uh, to discuss. That's also one of the reasons that we are here, the three of us. Interdisciplinarity and the links with science and business and technology. Professor Hu was already speaking about that. The link with science, art and science, as it was in the Middle Ages, Michelangelo, it, it's lost a little bit in our times. We need to start working together again and making a closer relationship. It's important and we need to discuss how we can do that. A sharper focus on innovation. So we need to have a constant discussion about the renewal in our different disciplines, our disciplines that we are representing. And then what is happening in Europe, uh, the integration into larger educational structures, it's something that our, our governments are initiating. So they would like the art schools to come together. And that is a process that's going on in almost all European countries. The, when we have University of the Arts, but also sometimes art schools are, uh, have, they have to work with, uh, they are going to work with nurse schools or, so there are all kinds of new uh, organizations starting and it's important to share experience and, uh, and to learn from each other in that. So, I would like to end with uh, Machado who said, traveler, there is no path, the path forms itself while walking. For Alia, I would like to say that. For Elia, it has been the same. While you are working together, while you are going on, things are happening and come on your way, and you have to be receptive to that. It's important that you are open to what is happening around you. Um, we had a very good meeting of the two boards yesterday, Alia and Elia, uh, very promising. And um, Elia, you, you, Elia offers their help also with, because it's, we are the older sister. The older sister knows a little bit more about life, she thinks, than the young one. So we offer our, our help, but also we very much welcome the dialogue, talking together what, uh, what is your experience, what you are working on, and what you are thinking, what you are developing with us in, in, uh, in Europe. So we hope that we will be able to work together, that we maybe can develop some joint projects together, that we will see and hear more from each other. You can always find information on Elia uh, 
uh, on the website. And you can also sign in for our newsletter. The, that's for free. You can always uh, email me and, and ask for information. You are all very welcome to be part in our uh, activities. And again, I really hope that we will be able to develop some joint projects together with Alia. Thank you very much for your information for sharing ideas, what they've done over the years. I think the, uh, they are more mature there, they are well established and very functional wise. So we learned a lot uh, from last night. We, we had a talk, we, we think about in, 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 the, in the future we should do more corporations which from Asia and in Europe even can link to other areas like Africa. So, uh, maybe maybe you have some questions, but we will keep them here. The, the, we finish all the panelists' talk, talk and then we can have questions, Q&A. So let's move to uh, President Sonny Togos from Mongolia. to greet you again and I'm really proud to tell you it's my third time to participate in Alia's event. Because we succeeded to develop collaboration in between us. For example, our university became a member of AIA also. And the Kyoto University of Arts and Design delegation had visited our university. And I could see that there are very many new friends who are joining AIA. And with this, I am very happy to see these changes. <laughs> And in the Asian region, uh, the issues of peace and art and uh, their relationship is very important. And uh, we are happy to inform you that uh, we succeeded to invite specialists from Kyoto University of Arts and Design to provide lectures on, on the art of making peace in the region. And it was very interesting for our university students, faculty members, and the people who joined this lecture. <laughs> And another very hot issue for us is, of course, this uh, quality assurance of higher education. And uh, we are very pleased to, to say now that uh, earlier President Kiran Corcoran and uh, Executive Director Carla Del Foss has received our invitation and visited our university in 2014 to provide a lecture on quality assurance of higher art education. And with this, uh, may I just briefly introduce you to our university and the goals and objectives which we are having in front of us. There will be shown 19 slides. So I would say that we are 
uh, in the same age with Elia because we were founded in 1990 also. But I also have to admit that before 1990 there were a, a number of smaller schools which were existing independently. And in this slide, from this slide, you could see that uh, uh, brought under one umbrella, which is called the Mongolian State University of Arts and Culture, uh, there are we have six schools of higher art education: a school of fine arts and design, school of music arts, school of theatre arts, school of culture, school of uh, broadcasting and media arts. And also we have a research institute and the high school of the arts and one college of uh, dance and music in the province. Altogether, uh, we are 5,000 people uh, where we have 4,500 students and 332 faculty members and, uh, and our younger generation, which is 197 students in high school. And uh, during the 20 years of our existence, um, we were having uh, artists, the best ones, to teach for our university. And with this, uh, the very common form of teaching at our university used to be apprenticeship, when one student was belonging to one teacher. And it was, it's a kind of a tradition in our art education from one side. And from the other side also, we were having educated teachers, trainers, who were who had received their education in the Eastern European countries, including also Russia and Bulgaria and the other countries. So it was like, uh, in teaching, we had a combination of all of these two different trends. And, and on this slide, you could see the map of Mongolia. And Mongolia has 21 provinces and 326 songs. It's the smallest administrative units. And we are proud to say that uh, 8,000 alumni are graduates of our university work all around Mongolia in every small administrative unit. They are employed at theatre, cultural centres, libraries, museums and schools. This from the other side uh, gives us a lot of responsibility because uh, the level of development of culture and arts of Mongolia will directly depend on our graduates. Nowadays, Mongolia, in Mongolia, there is a very strong development of the mining sector is happening. And uh, with this, unfortunately, we have to say that the situation with the arts, culture, and education stays the same. And while many countries in the world are developing this um, sector so as a field of creative industries, which, are, uh, uh, which sectors are becoming to be referred like income generating areas, 
in our country, we are staying a little behind of these processes. And in relation to the globalization processes, technology advancements, and consequently develop a lot of new vacations, workplaces, and economic services, knowledge and skills requirements are becoming really different. And especially in the consideration of these digital natives. Could you move to the next slide, please? Um, more, next one. Next. Uh -huh. And with this uh, so-called digital natives, we also have to have a new educational system and we have to really understand what academic programs and training technology is required in this new uh, area and new environment. And uh, we have also to admit that not only the Arts and Culture University of Mongolia, but all the Mongolian universities are defining their development policies and in initiating transformation processes, which study various approaches, implementation policies, and innovation possibilities in the field of art education. Uh -huh. And aiming to prepare specialists corresponding to specific needs and requirements of the uh, of this time and of the country, we are working to enhance training quality, to modify and innovate our syllabuses, contents and standards of our academic programs. We're trying to bring them to the international level and we're trying to collaborate with our partners in uh, improving our training technologies. And what is really important, we are trying to um, uh, transfer completely to this uh, credit system uh, with the introduction of our new management system, which is called Uniculture. Next one. <laughs> Uh, also now we are questioning ourselves whether our graduates are uh, responding to the market demands and the training con if our training contents are providing adequate knowledge and skills to them, if they are becoming competent and creative specialists, well trained, flexible and able to self-educate. <laughs> And with this, of course, we are trying just to bring here some key words which are also illustrating our mission and our goals and wishes. And we would like to really to reach the true academic freedom and in this, we would like to conduct our work in the environment where research, artistic creation and innovation are all are developed at the same level, where our students would be provided with an advanced learning environment to become competent, skillful, creative and competitive um, specialists, where quality assurance uh, will be providing all necessary tools to improve our university, where diversity of cultures, diversity uh, in all its uh, good means will be considered. In the 21st century, it's important to direct our attention to developing a national training artistic system and undertake sustainable actions based on cultural innovations through the support and nurturing of talents and also the study of traditional cultural heritage 
to protect, promote, and disseminate it um, as um, the heritage of Mongolian culture. And with, uh, with this, uh, we would like to propose some concrete activities for our further collaboration. And uh, to fulfill all these goals which we are talking about, uh, Mongolian State University of Arts and Culture would like to propose what if Alia will initiate an activity to organize the governmental level joint meeting uh, to discuss the uh, role of the arts education for changing the society. We really understand that it's something, it's something which should be initiated, it's something which should be done. And of course, uh, depending on funding possibilities, depending on financial situation of countries and different schools, and so it needs a, a joint effort to make it, to change the approaches to the higher arts education. Could you go back, please, to the, uh, the other slide? Back. Uh -huh. And also, uh, it's really important uh, that uh, we would be collaborating and especially bringing uh, attention of the um, general um, population of the countries and also the leadership of the countries to these issues. And this collaboration could be made in different ways. So we're really looking forward for Alia's support yeah, and initiative to organize this kind of a governmental level joint meeting. And the next proposal from our side is to set up um, a, a, an Asian Arts Online University. And we understand this, that this Arts Online University would be mainly uh, for the postgraduate and postdoctorate trainings where we could really put together all our efforts to train artistic research in this field. And the third proposal from our side is to intensify traditional collaboration between art universities. From the slide, as you could see, that we're proposing some different, also some small ideas. So I didn't follow up the slides directly, but probably you got uh, the things from here also because it was in English. But anyway, we would like to tell that our university is happy to learn from best um, cases, from best experiences of our sister universities, and we would, we would be happy to be collaborating with you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, President Sony Tokos, for, for her presentations. I, I learned three things from her. Number one, I learned the, uh, I, I know more about uh, Mongolian State University of the Arts and how she shared her six uh, key ideas and solutions for, for me to learn. And secondly, I think, uh, 
Sony Tower, they are doing very well uh, on uh, global uh, motivations or mobilities. They are doing really well. Number three, I, I think uh, they, they foresee the possibilities and difficulties. Um, and that that's jump to the conclusion that it is areas and areas we can work together and, and so we can make a really good move in, in the future. So let's go move to the, the third panelist, Professor Aman, please.
So it is time for men to understand and to redefine the meaning of beauty from various perspectives, from the inner dimension, from religion and spirituality, and also the external dimension, both. In order for us to have the roots and basis and the foundation of what we are talking about in us, and the development of art and also the beauty of art, the best comes, must have come from somewhere. And it cannot be just because of the society or the individual. It must be the, some foundation, a philosophical foundation and a spiritual foundation wherein us develop itself. And if you go to some Asia, you can see a lot of Hindu art, Buddhist art. Like in our country, we have a lot of Hindu art, a lot of Buddhist art, a lot of Chinese art, a lot of Islamic art, and also Christian art. And why this is so? So, and how can they live in harmony between the one and the other? There must be some animal of unity within this spirituality that make people live together and they do not oppose each other. At the very top, bottom, the foundation of uh, man, there's, there's, there are some spiritual elements, a religious element that put them together so that they can live in harmony. That's why if you go to Kyoto, you see a beautiful city of Kyoto, you see beauty. When you come to Malaysia, you see some beauty in Malaysia. It is also beauty. And people appreciate between the one and the other. And they don't oppose between the one and the other. Because human nature share the quality of beauty that they have between them and they appreciate others through beauty too. So we fill the gap in performing art, in tourist industry. We welcome people, of course, of our country to see the whole Asia in Malaysia. Next, please. And it's started as a national art economy and become a national academy of arts, culture, and heritage. And today we are moving on to become the University of Arts or Uni Arts in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Next. Of course, as other countries do, we create assets that can generate economic income and jobs for people in the country, from culture by itself to creative industry, to train students to participate in creative industries, to train them to become professionals in the various uh, fields of art. Of course, we do the networking with other institutes globally. I've met many friends here from different countries and we will to have our foundation uh, program next year. And we hope that this foundation program that we have will be able to cater students, not only from Asia, but also from Taiwan, from Japan, from Korea, from Singapore, and from other Asian countries. The medium of instruction will be English. This one we're going to have next year. The medium of instruction will be English. There's a great possibility for other countries to send students to our institution to learn both arts of Asia as well as English. And after that, to continue with their first degree in their own uh, various country, uh, in their own institution in the various country. But you can start with us for your foundation program in English instead of say, sending them to Europe cost more, but rather to, uh, to our country can offer. Now in the arts of Asia, we are one in Japan, in Korea, in Taiwan, one in Indonesia, the further uh, right, the culture of Indonesia, of Thailand, and of Taipei.
theory of this, this uh, master ship to, 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 to the crafts. So we try as much as possible to make invention through education. We should educate through imitating the master as well as through the epistemological process of programs. And of course, as time of
from Malaysia. Uh, the first session of region, I think we heard the uh, three panels the across, across the border from Malaysia, Mongolia to Europe. So I think maybe you have questions, but we are very close to the lunch time. So if you do have any questions, raise your hand and I speak briefly. I I'm only taking three. Three questions, or less. <laughs> and then I have another proposition to make, because uh, some of the, the guests, they, they, they like to visit our museums. I was planning if, if this first panel we could close earlier, but actually we could. So in order for the guests to have some time to visit our museum, they, have a, they say they have a wonderful exhibitions. But, but I cannot say that. I will lead, lead you to, to, to decide. If any one of you would like to, to visit the museum after the lunch, we would set 140s. There was someone standing in front of the museum to, to have you a quick guide to, to, to walk around the museum. So, do we have any questions? For these three expertise, okay, the one that's from IU, Susanna, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, please. Yes, sure. Um, my, oh, thank you. Uh, my question was for Carla Delphos. Uh, you had uh, under challenges uh, for higher education in Europe, one of them was cultural entrepreneurship. And I was just wondering what, um, do, do you, could you briefly define some of the initiatives you're doing uh, or taking to address uh, this? <laughs> <laughs> well, what we are doing, we, we are discussing it in our conference, but we also, we organize this uh, festival, and what we try to do with the young artists that come there is to do a course or a, a, a training in entrepreneurship, talk about it, get young people in because there are all kinds of new ways of young artists to work together and to make a, a, a kind of a living from what they do in a different way than, uh, than we did in our times. So that's something that we try to find out and try to map what's happening in the different countries and the different cities. Uh, incubating is a big word at the moment in, in Europe. So work, working together in, in different settings and what we try to do is also to, to uh, if we get the funding, to have a website with those examples there so that others can learn from what has happened. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Do we have any other questions going once? <laughs> do we have other questions going twice? Set. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> so uh, we can we can share some more ideas lunch time. So let's go up two two fly up and then you go up and make a left to, to the restaurant.